All right, welcome back with another episode of Digital Discourse. Today I have one of my good friends, Liv. How you doing today? Doing good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I feel like you um, you live quite a unique experience, <laughs> so I wanted you to share some of that today. Thank you. Um, first thing, actually, we'll start off with something like traveling is a thing that you do. I love to travel. That you love to travel. Yes. What's your favorite part about traveling? Um... Initially, I, I just like to travel because I was like, I want to, you know, who doesn't like to go on vacation? But the way I travel, I'm not staying at fancy resorts. I'm actually like staying in the city. I'm experiencing the culture. And so I feel like with every trip, I just walk away with a new experience, a new takeaway. Um, and it's just it's just like life changing, honestly. What's the biggest takeaway? When I did my Southeast Asia trip, I just really learned to be grateful. Um, and that's something that I've, that I've noticed in several trips, but just being grateful. Like, you go to other places and see how people live their life and they're happy and they have so much less. Like, in the United States, everybody wants more and more and more. And, you know, just forcing myself to slow down and, like, see how others live, living for the moment, um, just being more appreciative, like, has really helped. Ah, oh, that's solid. My last trip to uh, St. Martin, mm -hmm. that's what happened to me. I was feeling, I always feel uh, grateful when I go to these places, but this one, it was really hitting me. I was like, damn, this is, yeah. this is special. It's like, one, for one, I'm grateful that I have, like, the funds and the ability to go there, you know, the PTO, like, all the things. Mm -hmm. And then, like, once you're there and then you, like, make experiences, you meet people, then it's like, wow, like, I'm so grateful to just be here. So, it, I don't know. It's, traveling is amazing. I've been to 20 countries. Oh, nice. Um, and, yeah, I just want to keep adding more to the list. Pop quiz. How many countries are in the world? I think it's 195. Damn, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You got it right. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Good job. Good job. Do you have any crazy travel stories? I have a few. Like, in, I, I, don't, I don't have a super crazy travel story. I have a crazy travel story that's kind of like a dating story, too. Okay. But I will say when it comes to traveling, like, things that make interesting experiences is uh, there's actually Facebook groups. Um, so a lot of times I travel alone. And, you know, I can do, a lot of times I'll do tours during the day, and then I'll meet people that I vibe with, and then sometimes we'll go out in the night. Um, but I like to have a backup plan. And so there's actually Facebook groups for like solo woman traveler. Um, and you can, you know, say like, hey, I'm going to be in this area. Like who wants who would like to do this? Like you could post like whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then people will be like, oh, yeah, I want to do that, too. So um, meeting people that way has been hit or miss. I've met some people that I'm still friends with today. And then I met some people that I'm like, why? <laughs> like, why is this happening right now? OK. Hopefully they don't see this. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> that's good. That's um. So I, I was actually going to ask you a solo travel tip. So that's actually good. Yeah, Facebook but, groups are really good for solo travelers. So, but get into the uh, the crazy experience, the, the dating travel experience. So I got height fished. Okay. By a guy, and um, you know, the, it's this guy that I met via Instagram, and we started talking. We were FaceTiming, and I'm actually, like, even though I'm tall, I'm 5'7", I'm actually flexible with, like, the height requirements. Like, I've dated guys that are my height. Um, I know a lot of my friends are, like, no, six foot and above. So this guy said he was 5'9". Uh, we're FaceTiming, and he lives in New York, so he invites me to come see him. So I travel to New York to go see him, and I get off the train, and he was not 5'9". What was he? He was, like, 5'4". Oh, my God. <laughs> That's too big. That's too big of a gap. So literally, he, like, I'm on the phone, like, I'm here, I don't see you. And he's like, I see you, I'm right here. And I literally had to, like, drop down. <laughs> just looking over. I had to drop down to look at him. And I was just like, what do I do? Because I was so upset. Like, you had me come to New York, like, and you were lying about your height. Like, who does that? You know, like, that's weird. Yeah. And, and I didn't know how to approach it because I always said, like, oh, if I get catfish, I'm going to just be like, no, nah, you catfish, catfish me. Why would I stay here? But, you know, it's different because it's him. He just, like, lied about his height. And anyways, the date goes on, and it just it keeps getting worse and worse. Like, um, I asked him. There was a vendor on the street, you know, selling stuff. I asked if he had, like, $5 cash. And he's like, no, we got to go to the ATM. 
So we go to the ATM, I get cash out, it's his turn to get cash out, decline. And he's like, hey, can I Venmo you some money and you Venmo it back? And I was like, no, like that sounds like a scam. So he just freely starts telling me like, yeah, like I, um, I lied about my uh, income and I applied for all these credit cards and, you know, I can send you money for my credit card and when you send it back, I can put it in my like checking account. So I'm just like shook because that's a lot to take in, like in the first five minutes of you arriving on a trip to go meet somebody. Absolutely. This is a nightmare. <laughs> it was a nightmare. And then he told me that, oh no, then we went to a bar because I was like, okay, let's just figure out what's going on. So it's like, we go to a bar, he lost his ID, he starts panicking. He tells me that the reason he's acting so weird is he took a Xanax before the date because he was so nervous because he was lying. Right. <laughs> That's a lot of nerve. I'm about to pull up five <laughs> inches short. That's tough. So that was really bad. The good thing is that when it comes to, like, visiting men, you know, like, if a guy offers me to visit, I'm not, I, I like to get my own space. So I got my own Airbnb because, you know, I, at the end of the day, like, it was my first time meeting this guy. Like, I didn't know him. Um, he did offer me to stay with him, but I just wasn't comfortable. So that was a really good call because um, at the end of that night, I was able to go um, to my Airbnb alone. <laughs> he really wanted to take me, and I was like, no, absolutely not. Um, I did meet up with him the next day, and it was just, like, more downhill. Like, it was just insane. So I ended up just... Um, not talking to him ever again, and I just kind of enjoyed like a little New York solo trip for the rest of the weekend because it was not good. So I highly recommend if you know you are a woman and you're not sure, like you're meeting someone for the first time, you're traveling, like definitely have your own space that you can escape to, um, and like you know be able to have your own way back if needed. <laughs> nah, for sure. <laughs> you even meeting him, meeting up with him the second day is crazy. That should have been a, a one and done. I know. Well, the only reason I went is because we had this helicopter uh, trip planned. It was oh, like, God. yeah, that was really cool, and I didn't want to miss out on that. But, you know, I'm that talking to him, and even that, like, we get on the helicopter, we're in the air, and I'm having a blast. Like, I'm like, this is amazing, and he's terrified. Like, I had no idea he was afraid <laughs> of heights. So he's like this in the back and I'm just like what is happening like I look over and he's having a full-blown panic attack like none of it made sense like I don't know why he agreed to any of this damn that um, is, um it was my idea he asked me what I wanted to do and I said that but I mean he could have said no he could have said I'm scared like yeah. I, <laughs> I would have been understanding uh that's that's quite an experience yeah um <laughs> do you have any um like special travel tips how you can save money um, yeah, so definitely being flexible on your dates. Um, sometimes you can save $300 just by flying a different day that week. Um, another thing I do is I will sometimes buy my flights separately. Um, and then I really like doing that because then sometimes I even add extra stops. Like my last trip, I flew to Finland and then Norway, and then I got a flight back from um, Denmark, and then I bought a local flight in Europe from Norway to Denmark that was only like $100. Um, but if I would have booked it all together, it would have been like an extra $600. Okay. Yeah, so buying them separately, um, comparing, playing around with the dates, uh, that usually helps save a lot of money. And I know you are not a carry-on traveler, but I swear by it, traveling with a carry-on bag because you're not having to pay those fees. Um, and then also you don't have to worry about your stuff getting lost. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about transitioning. And, yeah, and taking I recommend on the plane. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all I have for the travel questions. Um, for the simple fact that you're able to travel like this, you are a woman who is in a higher percentage of income. Um, I am curious how that affects your, your dating life. It makes my dating life almost non-existent. Really? <laughs> it makes it a joke. Seriously? Yeah. How, um, do, do you come off as intimidating to men? Have you been told that? I don't think I come off as intimidating initially. The thing is that I truly come from humble beginnings. Like, I literally had nothing. My family was very poor growing up, like, lost everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really proud and grateful to be where I am today. Um, so yes, I like, you know, so, like I have a nice car, like I do like some nice things, but I feel like I'm very humble about it. So 
what happens is I'll meet somebody organically. We're not asking, like, what do you do? Like, we're not sizing each other up. It's a genuine connection. Mm -hmm. But then they get to know me better, and then, you know, they see the car I drive, and, you know, they see where I live or things like that, and they just kind of start sizing me up themselves. Mm -hmm. And they get intimidated. Like, it, it happened to me that I went on a date. We had a great date. And the guy walks into my car, and he just started acting so weird about it. He was like, oh, wow, like, this is such a nice car. And, you know, he was, like, hyping me up. And then he transitioned to um, trying to tell me that his Nissan Rogue was, like, better than my car because his had all-wheel drive. And I was yeah. just like, what are you talking about? Like, I never compared them. Yeah. Um, you know, and my car has all-wheel drive, too, anyway. So I was like, what are you talking about? But he was he just started rambling. And I was like, what is happening? And he never talked to me again. Damn. Like, you could just tell he was so, like, uncomfortable. Um, so I don't know. It, it's it's hard um, because, you know, I have a lot of friends that approach it the opposite way. Like, okay, a checklist. Do you have A, B, and C? Like, you know, do you have the height? Do you have the income? Do you, have the, do you live by yourself? Do you have a nice car? I like to get to know the person, you know, as a person. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's somebody that's, like, not where they want to be but they're motivated, I'm okay with that. But sometimes they're not okay with that. I feel that. And then the other part is, like, the money is one thing, but the travel is another thing. So right now, I'm currently on, like, a four-week trip. So, like, what I feel like a lot of men won't take me seriously because I could meet a guy, and then we have a great time, and it's like, oh, by the way, I'm leaving. Oh, when do you get back? Four weeks. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. So it's just like, it's hard because I can't really expect somebody to just wait around on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you say it makes your dating life non existence, it's usually more times than not on the other end. The guy just, just can't handle it. I don't know if can't handle it's the right word, but I mean. So it being non existent, you just break that down for what it means to you. I mean, I definitely try to date. Like, I try to meet people, um, but then it, it just always, like, falls off before it becomes anything because I'm gone or, mm -hmm. you know, they are insecure about something or whatever the case may be. Okay, so you're fine being the primary breadwinner in a relationship? Yes, and <laughs> um, I would like to somebody that has, like, you know, drive and motivation. So, like, I... I don't mind making more than my significant other. Um, but if they're like, oh, I'm just going to, like, work this minimum wage job and, like, do the bare minimum, like, I wouldn't be okay with that, you know? But if it's just, like, you're pursuing your dream, whatever that may be, and, like, you make a little bit less than I do, then I'm like, I'm okay with that because you're, you know, you're pursuing something that you're passionate about. You're showing motivation. Yeah. I don't like people that are just, like, stagnant and comfortable with where they're at that I can't deal with. So let's say, because... <clears throat> pursuing your dream definitely has different ceilings based on the dream. Yeah. So let's say you, you're meeting a guy, he's pursuing his dream, and let's say he hit it. Yeah. And the max salary for that dream is 50K less than your dream. You know, would you be fine with that? Still still respectable. Let's say, yeah. let's say he makes 80K or something. Yeah. You know? No, I'm okay with that. Because, I mean, think about it. Right now, I'm supporting myself. Yeah. So... Um, you know, I don't need somebody to come in and take care of me or like take over the bills. Mm -hmm. Like if, you know, if I'm with someone that makes less and we get serious and we're going to split the bills and stuff like that, I wouldn't do it 50, 50. I would make it so like we're both able to save, mm -hmm. but that would still be a savings to me, you I know, because I'm right now it's just me. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. I've had this, I had this conversation. Uh, this is like a scenario I like to put women in. Um, <laughs> could you talk about like the 50, 50 thing? Let's say. Let's say you with a guy, you move in with him, and where you were, you were paying two thousand dollars to live. Mm -hmm. So where he's at is three thousand. So he comes and he wants you to go fifty fifty, which is fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. So you're going fifty fifty, but you're still saving five hundred dollars compared to where you were. Yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. When I, when I ask women that question, some of them she like kind of get shaking a little bit. The only thing, like, is this renting or is it his own place that he's buying? Does it matter? It does. Because if, if it's, like, his mortgage payment, I'm not paying the mortgage. <laughs> like, I'll pay with utilities. I'll pay, like, groceries and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like, you're the one that's walking away. Like, 
with this investment. Um, so I'm not going to pay your mortgage. But if we're like apartment shopping and we're like going to rent together, then I'm okay with the 50-50. But what's the difference? Because even if you're not paying his mortgage, but you're paying the other things, you're still allowing him to have that extra money. I mean, I'm helping mortgage. him save, but I'm yeah. not contributing to his mortgage. Because what if we don't work out two years later and I paid half your mortgage? Like, But you, but my point is you'd still be doing it indirectly. If I don't got to pay 500 for groceries and electricity, that 500 goes to I mean, mortgage. I mean, I guess. But it's just the principle of, like, a guy saying, like, hey, I own this place. You're going to pay 50% of my mortgage bill. Like, yeah. no, I'm not doing that. Like, we'll it. find a different way <laughs> for me to contribute. <clears throat> um, I get that, though. I, yeah. I understand what you, where you're getting at. I mean, if you, like, if somebody moved in with you, would you make them pay half of your mortgage bill? Um, I feel like you'd be okay with them just moving in. I know. I, I definitely make them pay for something. Ain't nobody about to just pull up and be free. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't think, like, the mortgage, I don't think you'd be like, hey, pay half my mortgage bill. Well, I wouldn't think about it like that because I'd just look at it. This much is going out. This much is going in. Wherever the dollar lands, it is yeah. what it is. So if you want to be technical and be like, this dollar is for <laughs> chicken and rice and electricity, you do not send it to the <laughs> bank, then then sure, I wouldn't do that. But It just changes the amount, right? Yeah. Like. What you mean? I mean, it just it changes the amount because uh, if you if I'm splitting half the mortgage, that's like a very exact amount yeah. where like the other expenses are kind of like variable. Yeah, and I, I get what you're saying. It, it come it's a lot of variables in the situation. But, yeah. Um, the main question was if you could you go fifty fifty if you were still saving from your pre, your, yes. your previous expenses. Yes, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start asking all women that question. <laughs> uh, I might need to put that somewhere. Um, next thing. Um, so being in your situation where it's harder for you to date because of what you've accomplished in your life, do you sometimes get like anxiety about possibly being alone or having to super, super settle? Yes and no. Um, I wouldn't settle, so I don't. <laughs> okay. You just be alone. Yeah, I would just be alone. Um, and it's just like, sometimes I do think about it and I'm like, dang, like, I don't, I hope I don't end up like 50 and alone. But then a lot of times, like I, you know, have conversations with my family members and friends and like their relationships are so stressful. And so I'm not going to lie. Like sometimes I'm like, I appreciate the stress free, like the drama free, um, that comes with being single, but it has made me put a lot of thought into like what I would want in a relationship, like how I would want a relationship to look like. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm definitely not rushing and definitely won't settle. Like I'll take my time. Um, I don't think I'll end up alone. I just think that right now it's hard for me to settle down because I'm just in a period of flow. I'm just on the go. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's really hard to like meet somebody like that. Okay. Do you feel, since you are the type of woman who prioritizes her career, mm -hmm. do you feel like that somehow, um, that you're going to be missing out on potential relationships or even motherhood and anything like that? Yeah, so uh, I probably will miss out on motherhood. Um, I don't think that it's just because of the career. I just think it's it's something that I'm like not – I don't feel like I need to become a mother to be fulfilled, so it's not at the top of my priority list. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, I don't have anybody that I could like become a mother with right now anyways. And I'm really? 33. Like, I don't see myself having kids in the next five years. At that point, I'd be 38. So I just don't really see that happening for me. Um, but as far as like missing out on relationships, like, yeah, definitely. Because right now I'm, you know, based out of Colorado. Um, but I travel a lot. And it's like a lot of people that I meet don't work remotely like I do. So, you know, they want somebody that's like present. They want somebody that they're like, I could see myself building with this person. And they don't see me like that because mm -hmm. I'm always on the go. So I do, I guess I would see myself like missing out on relationships because I'm prioritizing my career. But I'm really happy doing that. So I'm okay with that. Okay. I guess it's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, I've heard from multiple black women that Colorado is racist. Is do you have you ever felt that? Is that like a, a thing? Definitely. Um, when I'm, in, it's funny because like 
right now that I'm here in, you know, in D.C. and the East Coast, like, I'm outside. But when I'm in Colorado, I'm in the house. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't do anything. I just shut down. I just, like, focus. Um, I'll go out and try new restaurants. They definitely have been trying to, um, there's a couple people in the city that have been trying to, like, make some upscale places um, that are diverse and inclusive and things like that. So there's definitely people trying to change that. But the vibe is really kind of like brewery, frat boy um, type of place. Like the black clubs that are there, it's it's only a couple. So you know how here, like, you know, different age groups go to different clubs. Mm-hmm. I feel like in Denver, like all the black people go to the same club. And it's like you, could, you see a 21-year-old or like a 50-year-old. You know, yeah. like it's just kind of like an all-over-the-place vibe. Um, so I don't, I don't like going out in Colorado because like, they're just, you know, sometimes like when white people get too drunk, they like lose awareness, like spatial awareness or bumping into you. I had people like bump my drink out of my hand, not even offer to replace it. Like just rude. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, why am I out here? Like I could just, you know, be at home chilling. So it's just. It's different. Another thing that's interesting, I feel like in Colorado, um, I'm, like, I don't know how you say this, but um, have you heard about how your scale of looks changes depending on where you are? I've never heard that, but I could see how that's a thing for sure. Yeah, so I feel like in the East Coast, like, I don't want to give myself a number, but I feel like I'm on the attractive end of the scale. Uh-huh. And I feel like I get, like, a lot of attention. Um, and then in Colorado, I get nothing. Like, I feel like in Colorado, I'm like a two. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nah, it makes it. <laughs> like, I feel like in Colorado, like, they prefer white women. Um, and I'm just, like, not that. So, you know, like, I'll go to a bar, like, have to wait forever to get a drink. Like, it's just, like, dang, like, I miss the East Coast. Like, <laughs> where I'm appreciated. I get that. I get that. <laughs> <clears throat> so what about the experience actually makes you feel like um, that is, like, kind of being, dis- like, discriminatory? Like, there's some actual racism present. So, I mean, I grew up there, right? So, mm-hmm. like, I've definitely seen, ex- seen like, experiences where people, like, white people got drunk and, you know, they felt entitled to call a black person the N-word. Okay. Um, you know, I've definitely seen that. So, that's, like, clearly racist. Yeah. I feel like now it's just, like, more microaggressions. Like, they're just kind of like, mm, I'm just going to, like, pretend you, I don't see you, like, bump into you, like, not respect your space. You know, like, it's just, like, yeah. little microaggressions things. Okay, no, yeah. that makes perfect sense. Yeah, you definitely can't be like you could twenty years ago. Yeah. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, like it's just like you don't feel welcome, you know? Like, yeah. like you go into a space and you don't feel welcome, and it's funny because um, there's a new restaurant that opened up that it's kind of like supposed to be like a day party, like a uh, upscale restaurant for you know the culture. Um, and I haven't been there yet. I want to go when I get back. It's called Foreplay, but. Um, this white girl told a friend of mine, like, oh, wow, like, I really like this place, but now I know what it feels like to be a minority. Mm -hmm. And I just think it was so wild that she even said that, like, that she said it out loud. (laughs) Like, that's just how comfortable they are, you know? Yeah, I mean, (laughs) I can understand it being a real experience for her, but it is a little insensitive. Yeah, to say it, right? Like, to somebody that's not white. So I was just like, she said what? Um, and I was like, that, like, that's just crazy. So, you know, especially like being in DC where like it's chocolate city. So, you know, like you're, it's normal to see, um, you know, doctors that are black or, Mm -hmm. you know, managers that are black that, you know, people in high positions, you don't really see that in Colorado. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think there's just like a level of like, like, I feel like in Colorado, if I didn't work remote, if I had to work in the office, I'd probably, like, have to be, like, proving myself all the time. Mm-hmm. Where I feel like in D.C., it's diverse work culture. Um, you know, people respect your experience, and you're not constantly having to prove yourself. I feel that. I feel that. That's a good, um, that's a good perspective. Yeah. What's your ethnicity? I'm Mexican and Belizean. Okay. So, this is a question I, I asked my Puerto Rican friend one time, and I thought it was funny. When you dream, okay. do you what language do you dream in? Oh, that's a good question. Well, it depends on what I'm dreaming about. Okay. So, like, if I'm dreaming about my grandma, she only speaks Spanish, I'll dream in Spanish. But, like, if you were in my dream, like, you speak in English, so I'll, I'll dream in English. Okay. What if it's just you in the dream? I mean, you're just doing something. You're in the woods. It's... <laughs> 
It's majority English, um, but I will dream in Spanish sometimes. Okay. That's yeah. pretty cool, honestly. <laughs> um, Bad Bunny. Oh, God. Bad Bunny. I know he used to... I remember when he first came out, he you know, he had the hat to the side or to the back. He was kind of like a thug. Now he's fluid. I think he just had a, a waist trainer on, like like yesterday. I didn't see that yet. Yeah. I think he, <laughs> he was like sculpting his body, like... <laughs> Like, well, you, you know, he has, like, a music video where he's in drag, like, the whole video. Oh, I didn't know that. I, oh, I don't yeah. listen to Bad Bunny. Yeah. He, he had a couple songs I like. <laughs> he has a video where he's in drag. It's uh, called um, Yo Perreo Sola, which means, like, you know, like, I twerk by myself. And, it like, all the women thought that, like, he made the song for us. Like, oh, like, you know, we can dance by ourselves. Like, we don't need a um, man to dance on or whatever. It was like the female summer anthem. And then he released the video and it was like, Oh, like he made the song for him. Like, oh my God. <laughs> this sounds funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you need to watch it. Yeah. yeah. Does it, do you think, um, what's your take on that? Do you think maybe the world, the climate of the world just changed and he revealed who he truly was or, or it's um, kind of some kind of I fake really thing. like I think that Bad Bunny makes really great music. Um, I've been to a couple of his concerts in the past, uh, not the recent tours. Um, I feel like when he started, I, I just kind of feel like he's not true to himself. I feel like he kind of is a bandwagoner of trends to mm-hmm. kind of like try to reach to more people. And then to me, I'm just like, it just, it's not authentic, you know? So he's kind of fallen off for me. Um, mm-hmm. There's like some classic albums that like he'll never be able to top. Like you know, his he just released an album recently, and I was disappointed by it. So I went back to listen to his um, other albums, and it was actually a trend. Like I was not the only one that was doing that. So like you know how they attract the numbers. Yeah. His previous albums were actually trending more. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What makes you feel like it's not authentic? Um, so like to your point, so like you said that, you know, he kind of came out, I don't know if I would say he was like a thug, but he's definitely was more like streetwear. Um, you know, his, you know, reggaeton is kind of like rap music in the sense that it talks about women, money, cars, um, you know, drugs, like all the things reggaeton has the same topic. So I feel like he made really good music. He got really popular and famous, um, you know, talking about women Mm -hmm. and, you know, what he liked about women and, you know. Um, then he came out as gender fluid, which, you know, I'm totally accepting of that, but it's just kind of like, are you really, or like, you know, and then, um, a lot of his music was also like, so for the culture, like that's why people fucked with him so heavy. So that's why people fucked with him so heavy. Uh, one of his songs was even like a documentary, you know, bringing attention to, um, gentrification that's going on in Puerto Rico. So when he dated Kendall Jenner, I feel like a lot of Americans were like, why, like, what's the big deal? Like, why is everyone so mad that he's dating Kendall Jenner? It's not that he's dating a white woman. It's that he went so hard for the people. And then he turned around and dated, like, not only a white woman, but, like, a Kardashian of all of them. (laughs) So, like, it was just really, like, okay, like, now you're just kind of hopping from, like, thing to thing. And, Mm -hmm. like, people kind of stopped taking taking him seriously after that. Um, He still has a huge fan base. Um, you know, I still listen to him when a song comes on, but I definitely don't rock with him like I used to, for sure. Okay. Okay. Um, I only got three more questions now. Okay. They're very random, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> I, w- I, I have a fourth one. I, I am curious, based on how you grew up, like your humble beginnings, how do you feel like that molded you into who you are now? Um, well, it made me hungry, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, I I had to find a way to for myself. I did that, you know, joining the military. Um, that opened up a lot of opportunities for me. I was just like, I can't fail. Like, I don't want to live the way I grew up. Like, I want something better. Like, it just made me hungry, and I had to go do that. Um, then it got to a point where I felt like I was being successful, but I was actually being played by corporate America. <laughs> Uh, I found out that I was being seriously underpaid. I didn't have any, like, you know, negotiating skills. Like, I didn't even know you could negotiate. There's a lot of things that I just didn't know because of how I grew up. So, um, you know, I think that being not only hungry, but being open for feedback and, like, willing to ask for help and questions really is what helped me get to where I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, because I could have definitely stayed at a place where I was just like, oh, I'm so happy and I'm successful here. 
Um, and like looking back, I'm like, wow, I've came up so much more since then. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. If you had the power to change one event in your life, what would it be? I don't know. That's always a tough one for me too. I wouldn't change it because, um, you know, I was talking to you about this offline that I started doing this thing when I'm really grateful for like a, you know, a moment that I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and I'll, you know, I call it connect the dots. I'm like, okay, what event allowed me to be here? And then what happened before that event? And just like tracing it back. um, It's, it's really cool to do that. And it's really cool to see how different decisions you know, affect your future. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't feel like I would be where I am today if I changed something. Okay, that's fair. That's kind (laughs) of, that's my answer to that question. It's so hard. Um, You learn so much from the negative experiences too. So it's like you can't really take them out. And I kind of have a theory that you kind of have to go through it at some point. Like if everything is great up front, you're probably going to crash in the middle or at the end. Like, so. That's true. Yeah. Have you ever had a life-changing moment or, like, a revelation? That's hard because I feel like I've – since I'm a person that lives in the moment, I feel like I have a lot of life-changing moments. But my most recently one, since you said revelation, too, so I'm a person that's, like, agnostic. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I went to Norway, I got to see the Northern Lights, and it was amazing. Like, I just felt like an energy – surrounding me and it just really made me like question like you know what's out there Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and so I've just been journaling a lot and like thinking a lot since having that experience because it was really cool to just see it um but I definitely felt like you know overwhelmed by the experience it was a beautiful feeling damn I wish I could have been there for that you have to go yeah um okay last question uh is if you had 30 seconds, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say to them? I would just say be kind, slow down, be patient, um, and be appreciative. Uh, I know it sounds cheesy, but our, our lifestyle is so fast paced and it's so easy to like, you know, get lost in the speed of things and, you know, the stress of things and not being, um, in the moment for those friendships, for those relationships with family members, loved ones. So, um, you know, just taking the time to reflect, slow down, be grateful. It can actually impact your life a lot. Okay. Uh, I do have one more question just okay. popped in my head. Because <laughs> you get the perspective of, like, you know, the passport bros. They talk about American yes. women and, and uh, foreign women. Do you have um, any experience on what it's like dating foreign men versus American men? I never, like, seriously dated a foreign man, but, I mean, I I have traveled and, like, met someone that I thought, like, was attractive and, like, went on a date with them. Um, I think that foreign men are a lot more, what's the word, Um, conservative. I feel like the passport bros are very, like, I'm here for one thing and, like, you know, have fun tonight. And, you know, like, I went on a date in Denmark, and it was just kind of like, is this guy even interested in me? Like, I had, you know, like, I couldn't tell. Like, people's cultures are a lot differently, um, or, or a lot different. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's all I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes the interview. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. All right. And we are out. <laughs>